amendments to the agenda. I'm told there is none. Approve the minutes of January 22nd, 2020. Special comes to review them. Completely. I did not already ask some questions, so. And, and you're pretty happy with it? Yep. But I'll let you check it out. Oh, this is, this is, yeah, yeah, I read this one. This is with the. January 22nd. Yeah, this is the one with the um, treasurer, appointed treasurer. Yep, that is the one. And the procurement policy. Yep. yep. Yeah, I make a motion to accept the minutes as I'll, written. I'll second the motion. Motion made by Mike, seconded by Richard. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Number four, Jane Melfi. I assume that's you. Welcome. What would you like? Well, I have a request to see if there's enough money in the highway budget to supply a horse sign, a horse and rider sign, on the intersection of Douglas Road and Elmore Pond Road. One of those yellow triangle signs that have a horse and then a rider on it. Yeah. I'm requesting that in behalf of my daughter, who has two horses at that location and rides quite a bit. And that's a fairly busy road. And you said it's at the corner of Douglas? Yeah, and Douglas Elmore and Elmore Pond. <coughs> if it were possible, financially feasible for the town to supply a sign for that location. Okay. Lucian, do you have any idea how much a sign like that would cost or if we have any precautionary signs over there? I don't know. We'd have to, uh, Linda would have to price it and get it. Then you got to buy this breakaway post. Uh, I don't really know, but I'd say at least a couple hundred dollars per sign. I don't know. Obviously. And you're requesting one? One, yeah. Jane, did Linda go over costs with you for a sign? No, but I did call a company in Kentucky mm -hmm. to get a price if I were to privately buy it. And with shipping for the post and the sign and, and for everything, it would probably be around 150 something like that if I were to buy it. And that was a uh, full-size town approved sign? Yes, a uh, 10-foot post, I believe, they ten. quoted me on. <coughs> is this for the DeMars horse? Pardon me? Is, is this for the DeMars horse? I know Teresa, I think, or Tracy? No, Latiri. Say it again. Latiri. Latiri. Is my daughter's last name. How do you spell that? L E T T. I E R I. What's her first name? Kate. Kathy. With a K? C? Yes. K. So, do you think we'd need two? One <coughs> coming from Route 12 and one coming from Route 15? I don't know. <laughs> two would be better than one, but one would be. One, Better if, than nothing. <laughs> if we could squeeze out one out of the budget, that would be be very appreciated. Okay. So my thought is, is that we should get pricing um, from Linda for the post and sign. Uh, Deb, can you ask Linda about getting us a price for that and getting us a price for both one and two, just so we can see what we're looking at and we can put you on the agenda for February 19th. Yeah. What was that? And we'll put you on the agenda for the February 19th meeting to oh. make a decision on the sign. Okay. Is February that okay? 19th. Sure. Yeah. And what should your sign say? Yeah. It doesn't say anything. It's, it's just a picture. A picture. Just a picture of a, of a horse. horse. Yeah. And a no, rider. Of horse. horse. It's a Concert color. black horse and a black rider. Yeah. <coughs> you know, like a silhouette almost. <coughs> 
Yeah. Yeah. Just to alert people that there's a horse in the area and a rider. I think this would be a really decision. Oh. Good idea for that. Okay. Yeah. So we'll put you on the agenda for the 19th and we'll ask Linda to get costs on the signs for us. Great. I'll be back. Okay. Yeah. Thank, thank you. you. You're Thanks for hearing. Thank you very much. You're here. All right. Number five. Thank you all. Um, that is a uh, highway commissioner report. The solution. Um, just a couple quick things here. We have a new, uh, River management, Patrick Ross is taking over for Chris Spinell. Chris Spinell has some family problems, I understand, so he won't be here. Patrick has called and told me that he's available. Weather breaks will be used to to walk down the North uh, Wild Branch River to see what we need to do. There's areas that we're gonna have to probably clean out because of the flooding. One is right at, the day, uh, right at the bridge as you come in off of Baldwin Brook, Baldwin Brook River. I guess Baldwin Brook River, I guess it is. Mm -hmm. We're going to have to do something there. And there's some more up as you go out towards Crossberry. Um, I have uh, Joey's contract here. I just want the board to look at it. And you'll give me a verbal to get him, so, but you should look at it before I sign it. It's what we talked about, but I, you guys need, should look at that. Okay. So it's the 6000 that was anticipated already for Brook Road? Yes. Looks pretty straightforward to me. Yeah. yeah. It's in part of the emergency response. Up here. I do, you did. Okay. So I'll sign that and send it back to him. Sir? Yep. We need to make a motion on it for a motion to sign the, the scoping engineer's study contract the for the Brook Road. I just did. So Here motion, we go. motion was made by Kim. Second. By Michael. All those in favor say aye. 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 Okay. And we went around and did some cold patching. Weather's been in a little bit in our favor. We did uh, North Walker Road, Town Hill, East Hill, and uh, hope it stays. Now we uh, we have a slug of snow coming. We all ready yeah. to roll there? Yes, we are. Well, that new uh, radar speed sign below my house, that hasn't been working for no. weeks. No, it's... It hasn't been. He, he never finished it, and then the one on Town Hill, somebody ran over the post. Your season, so we never. He wants to get them both up at the same time, so. Because it was working, and then it. Oh, it was. Yeah, and then it it wasn't. It was like, it's solar. It could have snow on top yeah, of the panel. Yeah, snow. There's no, there's, there's no snow on the panel. We've had no sun in like a month. Sometimes <laughs> I feel the ones we're working that are dry by. Her solar feels. Her solar feels like, so like anyways. It's horrible. And there's snow on I'll call Wayne the bad one. All right. Um, see, oh, well, we went out and graded Town Hill this week. I think that came out really well. I don't know if anybody's been up there. We got rid of quite a bit of the potholes and stuff. And, that. and weather preventing, we're going to do as many roads as we can here. How was it, Bill? Yeah. No, Bill, Town Hill. No, but he said he'd been up there. Oh. He, when you said I that. Used town, no. Yeah. Oh, I didn't realize. Right. When you said that, he, he raised his hand, so. How is it? Yeah, good. I mean, considering it's winter, it's the first time I've ever seen it done in winter. It's good. <laughs> Got to try something, right? Got to try something. Got to be somewhere, right? Yep. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> let's see what else here. Oh, I went to, Dylan and I went to the posting the road limits signs and stuff with the Department of Motor Vehicles today. Um, I don't know if it's really worth putting up the cardboard signs because we already have the signs up there posting 24,000 pounds. Uh, the only thing that you could gain from it, and it would take the select board's vote to lower the weight class. But if you lower that, what are you gonna do with your school buses and stuff? 
people think school buses are exempt according to the Department of Motor Vehicles. They are not. But they got to go through. Buddy. It's damn you do and damn you don't. Fuel trucks. Fuel trucks, milk trucks. Well, I guess we don't have any milk trucks anymore. <laughs> yeah. When do we go through the posting along the roads? When does that happen? I think you can do it anytime you want. Well, no, my only question is, is the golf road is posted so certain times a year trucks can't use it, but it makes it dangerous to pull out onto Route 15 by having that road posted. The, the state prefer that we do not send traffic down to turn left on Route 15. Right. I'm sure they do. That's, in, That's a dangerous place to turn out of. minutes of the meeting here. When we did that, I don't know, five, six, eight years ago, That's whatever it was. The North Walker Road. Yeah, if, if you take the dump road off it's, the North Walker Road, take the dump road, come down to 15, the trucks are trying to pull off there. And they obviously dangerous. go super slow as they're getting up to speed. And that's a bad place. So I was just curious. And if we about post the posting. signs, they have to be on a separate post, they have to be certain heights and everything else. Uh, I don't think you'll gain a thing by doing it, but if you want me to do it, I will do it. No, if, if you're, you don't see any value in it. I, I don't. All right. In for that class, so you're talking about any road are, now? Yeah. Are you talking all about all getting, like the state rules out scales or something? I mean, enforcement is. All our roads are posted 24,000 pounds. Mm -hmm. And you can make them lower, but you can't make them higher. Right, but you're saying. They're all, they're already posted that, correct? Yes. yes. And but you're saying it's not beneficial to put what additional well, posts? Well we every year they put up these cardboard signs on a two by three or two by two, one by two poster and go set it up and say them. But they're already posted. Right. So Excuse me. and we gotta buy them, we gotta buy the post, they gotta be break they gotta be breakaway posts. Oh, nine yards. You just, and the, the guy, the person that run the class, he said, if they're not set up properly, they're not legal. A lot of times, when you post your road, you post something less than what your road is posted for, just, just to protect. So then those signs would make sense. You might want to post them for 16,000 or something like that. But the school bus factor. Yeah, it, it, it affects everybody when you do that. Yeah. Right. And how do you pick a number? Just some random number that out of your hat, or whatever yeah. you want. I don't know. <clears throat> My suggestion would be leave home personally, but well, we wouldn't be posting. Agree. It's February, so we wouldn't be posting until April or so, or March, mm -hmm. March or April. Usually posting depending on the weather. March, April, right? right? March. Usually posting March before the roads break up, and then usually till like. In the May or something like that. Yep. Is so there, the frost comes out. The reason for the posting at the lower at 16 is to keep the log trucks, which are a lot heavier, and when the road starts breaking up, it doesn't turn it into a mud pie. But are, I mean, I'd, I'd imagine a full log truck is probably over 24,000, though. No? Yep. I don't know. Yeah. So, so they, <laughs> they would be. You know, we had an issue last year because roads were posted. And they got messy, but someone needed a fuel delivery. We had oh, that conversation. Yeah. yeah. Well, the other thing oh, too is that you can't prevent people from being able to get fuel. We okay. make all these you truckers do. buy overweight permits. Right. You're supposed to. So you're you you're selling them a permit to go and ride your roads. The only good thing that we do is we make them have a certificate of insurance. So if you could supposedly if you, if you could convict them of it, you could the town could sue the insurance company. So if they get stuck on one of these roads and they have to have some massive tow truck come get them, can we bill them for the cost to fix that road that they just got stuck on? You'd have to go to court, according to the DMV, and get a judge to sign it. And then you can sue them. So you actually have to sue them to get paid back for the damage that they did yeah. to your road. Right. And you got to, even though they're stuck in a mud hole, you got to prove they're the one that did it. 
Yeah. Uh, I, I did follow two logging trucks on the pond road today. Full. So they can, okay. they can be there right now or they can't be there right now? Right now they can. Yes, they can. <laughs> it's what Robert was talking about from what? April to or well, March, it's, March it's, to it's May. The first part of March. <clears throat> it's, yeah, you post it before the roads yeah. are right? And then yeah. it's not just getting stuck, it's just the damage. That oh, no, no, I was just curious a if alone. you could recoup. It's, it's really hard. I think the thing is, if you were to keep the log trucks off from the golf road, they can use the other road. It's not a big deal for a fuel truck once a month. That's a lot better than a log truck going 20 times, which would do more damage. And that's the only reason they usually do it. Right. And those, and usually logging operations are fairly decent at getting those permits. Yes, they are. And if they're not, you can go and ask them and they it's will. It's quite a hefty fine if they don't right. get when they get caught. Because that operation is not small that sent to, because I drove by it on Route 12 on my way home and then I followed them the whole way. So it's not small and they're not done. Okay, well, this is a continuing conversation, I think, we, but um, one that uh, is viable being had. That's all I got, unless you got something to me. No. I do. Um, I received an email um, from someone up off of Baldwin Brook, and uh, we chatted. He said that it's, it's been in amazing shape lately. Um, he was also following one of our plow trucks at 4 a.m. and was impressed that he was lifting his wing for every driveway. I have driveways in almost every Lamoille County town I plow, and you hardly see that, and it makes it difficult for homeowners and plow people if it's not done. I have to believe it's a huge pain in, for the plow truck driver to do that, so please make sure they hear the good. So that's from the citizen up Thank there. Thank you. I'll pass it on. Yep. Sure um, okay. Thank you. All right, we're going to move on to comments from the community. Community. Okay. All right. Uh, so we have new business is number seven. Um, we have the U.S. Census Bureau. So I did see this in this file. Um, this is, oh, right. So this is the Initial Boundary Validation Program, the BVP. So this is where um, the census sends us a copy of what they feel the town boundary, boundaries are, and we were to review it and say that we do agree with it or we don't. Um, from my understanding, Tom, um, yep, Tom was the one who was CC'd this. So I have not received word that Tom looked at it yet, but I am under the understanding that he will be. I don't think it's been opened yet. Oh, right. Oh, I thought it was that. That's what I looked at. Right, like. yeah, no, I thought, right. And so there's something for me to sign, but I'm not sure if it's been opened yet. I want to sign anything. So this is just, this is correct or not correct. So what we'll do is I think the board should just make a motion to make it formal that we ask Tom to review the boundaries um, and do whatever's enclosed on this. Yeah, CD-ROM. <laughs> CD-ROM, yeah, nice. They made those anyway. State, baby. State-ROM. U.S. Department of Commerce. Motion was made to, ask, to allow Tom to go ahead and do this, or ask. Second. Approve Tom, I should say. Second by Michael. All those in favor say aye. 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 Perfect. So, keep this in the fold. Oh, more increase in recycling. Jeez. How bad is it? Well, Richard, this 15. is 15 per ton. $15 more per ton. Yep. So the email that came to us um, just asked if you would go ahead and use your resources and just make sure that it's something that is happening. All um, right. I'll check beginning March 2nd, 2020. I mean, I don't know of any other haulers. I don't know if this is something we've ever even put out to bid. I don't know. I don't think if we have. There's any. I don't really think we have too many options on that at this point. Right, I mean, it all ends up in the same place. Um, so, how many? So, this would be an action item for Richard just to follow up on yeah, the uh, increase increase of the um, tonnage. About how many tons are we shipping up? Uh, 
in the email, it did hit on the fact that Linda could provide us that information yeah. if we want. So if you'd like, you could follow up on Linda and see. I mean, we may not want to really know, consider uh, raising our rates yet. If it's and the budget's been set, so if it's yeah. nominal, we'll uh, work up the numbers, see how much yeah. tonnage we do. Yes. Multiply it by the increase and yeah. see what kind of increase total yeah. we're looking at. Yeah. And I'll check with the district. Yeah, worth following up on just to see, because we really like to try and keep them in the green as much as we can. Um, liquor control. So this is the Wolkett store liquor permit. So is this the Wolkett store? Yes, so Wolkett store at gmail.com. So this is uh, 4076 Route 15 in Wolkett, Vermont. Um, So it was signed and dated 21st January 2020 by Sally Martin, co-owner. Um, it's that certifies that the information in this application is true and complete. So is there any discussion? We've never not done it. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's fair. I make a motion to approve the 2020 liquor license <coughs> renewal for Wolcott Store. I'll second that motion. Great. So a motion was made by uh, Kimberly and second by Richard. All those in favor say aye. 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 Okay. Perfect. Um, so next is adoption of uh, highway, or excuse me, adoption of 2019 road standards. I don't know if Michael would like to. Uh, yeah, I don't have it with me, but did you notice that these aren't filled out? All right, I think um, they seem kind of relevant. Yes, right. Yeah, they must complete it and sign. And if we were to sign this and give it back, then we would not know what they were to. Um, right, we should ask for them to complete this application before yeah. I'm trying to see if it's due what didn't they do? beginning May 1st, 2020. That part. And it begins May 1st, 2020. So we have time. We don't need to necessarily push this thing right through. Well, but that, that doesn't pertain to us whatsoever. That pertains, no, but, that pertains to the state giving them that license. Right, that, but it should be. That would determine whether they got it or not. Is that right? That's not yeah, for our consideration? That's, not, that's, that's a state not for thing? us. Not at all. Okay. Probably just go ahead and okay it. I um, I could go along with that. So we're just going to go ahead and stick with the motion that was made. So the motion was made by Kimberly yeah. and seconded by Richard. Um, all those in favor say aye. 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 I'm all right with that. Is um, approved. <clears throat> One of these. If you just want to make a note, Deb, for Sally when she picks it up, there's two questions that are pertinent to her that she'll want to answer on the front page. Yeah, so that have be nothing an action to do item. With us. Deb, would you like to attest as scribe? It has to the town clerk to attest. We could ask Linda just to sign tomorrow. I don't. It's not like it's getting notarized, so she could probably sign it without us being there. Yeah. Would you like to sign, please, everyone? Well, I guess we can do that. It's not like a notary. Okay. So, um, the 2019 road standards. Yeah. yeah. So we're going to table that according to Mike. You didn't have it with you? Or um, no, I don't have them printed out with me, but, um, just to be clear, FEMA pays 75% of the oh, flood yeah. damage. Okay. Um, the state will compensate us another 12.5% if we adopt the road standards. I haven't studied them or anything. Uh, Lucian seems to think that we should I adopt them. I think we're supposed to sign before February 14th, 
Is that right, February 14th? I think, but I'm not 100% sure on that. Oh, boy. Because that's when that's, the that's, stuff goes in. That's something that maybe the board um, would consider a motion um, allowing us to sign outside of, you know, make make a motion to allow us to sign outside of a formal meeting if that is the case. I mean, Mike, yeah. Oh, sorry. Um, you know, if, if so, so Lucian thinks that we should accept it. We have a lot of money on the line to accept it. Um, I'm not a Rhodes expert, so I'm not sure really what I'd be able to suss out reading all the fine print of the standards. I think we should defer to Lucian's expertise. I also think they don't sign that. Uh, FEMA will pay to repay, let's just say, replace the 12 inch collar, but they won't give you the money to put in an 18 inch collar. They'll only give you the money for the 12. They'll pay for the labor and all that, but they won't pay for the collar. That's the, the 406. It's that 406 thing. It yeah. won't pay for the upgrade. So I'll make it, I'll throw it so out there. So you've I'll, read the whole thing, I'm assuming? I have read it, yes. And you've read the whole thing? I, I haven't, you know, studied it. Uh, I've, I've read it, but I haven't. Can we adopt it by email? I don't think, I don't think so. so. Um, yeah. I've read I've read it a little bit of it, but I've also met with Lucian. I've also met with Rob, and I've also met with Jim. And I know what I think. I think the town should sign it. Yeah. Me too. <laughs> <laughs> Just from everything I've been told Maybe and all the conversations. Should, so I've been, I've fabricate been. a motion so that we can get in and as available yeah. and sign yeah. it before the deadline. That's what I was I was reaching. Yeah. If there I is a without reading it. If there is a deadline that is before our next meeting, we can make a motion that would speak to that. But at this point, yeah. um, as as I just said, from the, all the meetings I've had and the people I've spoken to, I'm, I'm prepared to adopt the road standards. Yeah, I am too. I'll make a motion to adopt the 2019 uh, Vermont road standards. I'll second that motion. Okay, so a motion was made by Michael and seconded by Richard. All those in favor say aye. 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 Jeb, I'm going to abstain because I don't have enough information to vote. Can I do that? Or just say no, if that's what I have. Yeah, that's fine. Just because I haven't had a chance to read it at all. Yep, that's fine. No. I don't think so. Yeah, this is one of, this is, there's a lot to unpack with this road centers. It's a darned if you do and darned if you don't uh, sort of situation. And with us, it's uh, something that there's a big reality when you, when you see what's, what's li what lies ahead. Can you put just because I don't have the, the standard we have right now, I think either 13 or 14, 2013 and 14, we signed it. We have to select it. I forgot. Robert, were you on the board there? 2013. And 13. I've seen them I was not. I was not. I was no. Before me. Belinda was. He was. No, Todd was, wasn't he? Richard was. I think Todd was. Anyway, Todd and Richard might have been. I think so. They were incumbent when I was when I joined in 14. Bessie. Bessie, definitely. Bessie, Bessie would have been. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Absolutely. And Belinda. Yeah. It would have been Belinda, Bessie, Rob, Richard. And Todd. And, or Todd, Belinda, Bessie, <coughs> Todd, Richard, and whomever I would place. Okay, great. That is that. Uh, next is Certificate of Highway Mileage. This is something that um, the state sends to us, which it maps out our mileage, which then we uh, get reimbursement from the state according to how many miles of how many flavor roads we have, blah, blah, blah. It changes here and there. Once they find the GIS, the digital mapping goes, I sit next to these people, the digital maps go down and they find little tweaks and measures. So we are adding um, uh, 0.75 miles of a class three road and we're adding 0.45 miles of a class four road and the reimbursement. <laughs> so that's our uh, cynical and read basically yeah. yeah i think so um so that being said um i'm going to go ahead and make a motion to accept the uh revised certificate of highway mileage 
<clears throat> I'll second that motion. Uh, motion made by it, Richard, second by, excuse me, motion made by Eric, second by Richard. All those in favor say aye. 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 Okay, so this is another one where we all will sign. Excuse me, where's your class four road? Is it Pinnacle? Or is it? I don't know. Pinnacle would be three. No, I think this section of class four road is actually. Oh, I talked to her about this. What was it? Oh my god. Um, it's on the right off of the North Wolcott Road as you're driving north. It's on your right off the North Wolcott Road, maybe Tamarack. But for some reason, no okay, I don't know. I'm just uh, the, the road is short. It's it's a short road. section that didn't include a, the cul-de-sac that obviously is part of the class four road. You know, so when she showed me the map, the overlay went three quarters of the way up this little road, and then the little cul-de-sac, which there's I think a camper one year round house down there, um, wasn't in on what they had digitally. So that's why we're picking it up as far as the fact that we. It, it, there's no way for the plows to even go down that road without using the cold set to, to turn around. It's it's all. Anyway, it doesn't matter. I know what road it is. And it's like 200 feet. The, it's, yes, it's. The class three is Pinnacle because Reed was last year. All right, hold on a second. I'm sorry about that. Board of Select. Hmm. I'm wrong too. Tamarack's not that up there. Tamarack is over there. Yeah. You go, you go by it on your way. I know. I know. Because actually, the Tamarack road itself. What? I'm sorry. The old Tamarack road that comes from Tamarack Hill down. Oh. Well, it's not even there anymore after the last part. Turn it on. Yeah, it's gone. Yeah. Well, it's not even there anymore. Okay, great. Um, next, I have a, uh, next it says Candidates Night, February 25th. Uh, I believe it's at six o'clock here. We'll be videotaped. I saw it posting on front porch. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, I think the only question is uh, whether the board would wish to have the video posted on the town website. Otherwise, it could be on front porch forum. But that's you know something for you to consider. If you wish. Yeah, I don't see why not. What's the date again? Uh, 25th. This is the February 25th. This will be in this room, yep. as far as yep. I know. And um, I, I'm open to discussion. I don't. I don't think that the. I think the video should be included in that. And I think that anyone can't get there on that night, which I don't know if I can, would want to watch it. <coughs> yeah. No. Definitely. I think it's beneficial. All right. I don't think a motion has to be made because this is sort of where we're at with these things. Um, yeah. If whoever you know. Not in the select words, but review, it's Canada tonight. All right, um, so next is unfinished business, Old Town Clerk Building Water Supply. Uh, Linda and I have provided uh, Tim Sargent with the deeds that um, he says should speak to who maintains it. And I did read it, but uh, um, we'll let Tim, he's the lawyer, um, we'll let Tim go ahead and uh, speak to that when after he um, reads all of it. Um, Canon copier lease. I don't. We did get an email that was saying yeah. that it was. Well, the biggest thing in the here. email that I picked up was the Canon gentleman said, if the machine's working fine, there's really no need for a new one. Your copy volume is pretty low and it would last for a long time. Yeah, that's what I picked up too. <laughs> that's, I, that's what I And I didn't see thought. anything for a new one. So I'm assuming Linda's okay with the old one. Well, yeah. Two frames. So, okay. There. I think we're gonna. Well, my thought is to stick with the old one. Yeah, mine too. Signature here, please. <clears throat> okay. Um. So then I don't necessarily hear a motion that needs to be made out of that. Um. Eviction proceeding. I'm emailing with Tim. Um. This is an incredibly slow process, but um, it is a process, and he's moving forward in a positive direction. Um, ordinance Committee, Mr. Kerr. Yep, um, so actually I think uh, we're probably gonna have to defer on this. Um, we did receive back from VLCT their uh, legal review of the proposed ordinance. Um, the Ordinance Committee met last night. Uh, I think we agreed to adopt uh, all, all or most of the changes 
We had a couple of questions that I went back to the LCT today with, and unfortunately, I didn't get a response. Um, as of yet, they've been very responsive, so I will soon. Um, at which point, I will email uh, the select board and the committee the, uh, a clean copy for you to look at. Uh, one thing to, to consider is with town meeting coming up, uh, when the best time is for a uh, public hearing um, on the board of this committee. Uh, I think with candidates night and with town meetings, um, you know, we may want to hold that after town meeting. It's just my suggestion. Yeah, I agree. Um, the other thing is I, I didn't get to raise my hand quick enough during uh, comments from the community, so can we jump in now? <laughs> Um, they do have, I didn't know if I heard, Lucian may have addressed it, but I understand that we're down a person on the road crew and that there are candidates there available. And um, are those candidates, you know, being interviewed at this time or where do we stand with that? Jim Parody is going to fill in for us until we get a, another employee. And we're interview. We are going through the application file and looking through it again. And we will be contacting people within the next week or so to try to fill that position. So, Jim makes a much bigger wage than the others. Do we need to put an ad out to make this happen sooner rather than later? He's only to working. stay with He's only going to work when, the, <coughs> when it snows. So, his time will. Be cut in half, if not more. And no benefits. He worked Sunday for four hours, I think it was, yeah. and he hasn't worked since. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, the, my other uh, question is, I, I had a chance, now that the, the budget has been approved and there's off to the publisher, um, and, but I, so I kind of had a chance to look at the last uh, copy of the publisher. And my question is regarding the, um, uh, under the uh, road budget, is the $10,000 for temporary um, help. And uh, my understanding was that was for Lucian's consulting going forward. Yeah, to um, hand down, hand over the department to the new foreman. And okay, and this budget goes into effect July. And is Lucian, I mean, my, my understanding is Lucian was going to uh, work through uh, town meeting day, yeah, in, in a full time capacity or close to it. Well, yeah. I'm not working full time now, I, I'm main, mainly trying to deal with FEMA now, so I could work five hours today. Two tomorrow. Uh, I've even a couple of days I haven't worked. So. You're already starting to ramp down. Yeah, I mean, it's, I got to get the femur ready, and that's my goal. Is that's to get the very important. Yeah. The foreman, so, Dylan, is running the road trip. So the ten thousand can ultimately be moved to another well, needed place in the highway if it was sitting there not being used. Can it be moved elsewhere? All right. I, don't believe no, so. I, it, has I didn't hear the it. it has to stay with it. It has to stay within the highway budget. Fund, I don't think. Um, I would say that the town clerk has the same sort of format budget into theirs, where they have a little bit of a, a, a bridge period. So, and I also want to speak to the fact that that we wanted to get that ten thousand dollars in as a line item in case potentially uh, there's a, a long term town administrator option, and in that way that line item could get redefined as a contribution from the highway department to the TA. That so, was, so it could be, uh, if it's a contribution assigned to a different line item, that could be done for any purpose, right? Well, it would still, it would still be a line item to the highway department, right? That could be contributed to any other department. Well, this is the way that we looked. We looked as a way to take this money, help us bridge the gap, and help us move forward in the long run. Do you see a need? Are you? Um, um, did we underfund well, something? I, 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 
I just think it's important to identify it for what it is, because it's called temporary, um, temporary something. Temporary I'm not labor sure. or temporary? I can't remember. I think, was it temporary labor? Or? I think it was. Yes. Oh, yeah. I have it. Yeah. Yeah. And if I was, oh, shit, you know, to receive the budget in the mail, I wouldn't know. That would be unidentifiable. All right, so, so you, you would want to more specifically define line item as far as that goes. Right. Yeah. And the auditor would probably agree with you because they say the more specific, the better. Right. Yeah. Right. Okay. And so a related question, and the reason it kind of popped up in my head was um, the assistant uh, town clerk has been reduced by about 10000 And I'm curious if our existing assistant is aware of that. Uh, understands that uh, you know her uh, compensation or her hours are going to be decreased. Well, that's controlled by the town clerk. Yeah, it's an appointed position. But, yeah. but the decrease was made by us. Mm -hmm. right, right, right. Because we increased, we have fifty-two hours of town clerk and town treasurer. Uh, you know, we increase the hours on the front end, right? Um, so there wouldn't be as much of a need. That was the thinking for an for an assistant. Now, keep in mind that Allison, our, our current assistant, is attached directly to the current town clerk. And once the town clerk changes over, essentially her job is done unless the new town clerk chooses to appoint right right, right. I, I so, understand. Yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah i understand okay and the town clerk can use that budget however they want right so they can pay him 50 dollars an hour right but what you're asking yes. is did we ever make allison aware that potentially if she was to stay precisely her right. hours would yeah. be reduced right yeah. i don't believe we did no we, i haven't talked to allison but we could the intent, my intent, um, was to uh, uh, plan for a town clerk and perhaps a different treasurer, right? We didn't know what the town was going to do. Right. So if the town chose the same person as the town clerk and treasurer, I intend to make a motion on the floor to adjust those numbers accordingly. One thing we could do is okay. increase. I got you. The, yeah. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. Your only you problem with that to is make the is adjustment on the uh, town meeting floor. Yeah, that's our only option. Okay. We had to plan for the worst because we didn't know what the town was going to yep, do. Yep, yep. That makes sense. Yeah. Except that your town clerk and treasurer are already have going to accept a position, ultimately not knowing what they're going to make. Uh, well, I wanted to put on the agenda tonight but i didn't so it would go on the next agenda i think i think we as a board should state on the record what that number is so for just that purpose so people running have yeah. no yes i can afford to you know be a candidate right yeah. now there's no saying the town would approve that but it would just show the board's intent and i think it would be guidance for people yep ultimately up to the voters yeah, yeah. Okay. Thank you. That's it. Thanks, Kurt. Bill? I have two comments. My understanding when you made the budget, just to reinforce what I think you're talking about, is you kind of budgeted the worst case scenario because you don't know. Yep. You don't know, A, at that time, who's going to run B, whether it's going to be two separate people or one person as a town clerk and treasurer. So you've got it set up, and you put ten thousand dollars in there for the bookkeeper. Uh, so you've got it set up. So I think you can handle the situation well, particularly if you get a person that can be both town clerk and treasurer. Secondly, I think, and I that after the meeting on March the 3rd, it's going to be who you or whoever you are and whoever is in that office to immediately sit down and look at the budget and organize what you're going to do and how you're going to do it going forward short term and long term. Third, you put a little bit of money in the budget and you offset it with revenue for TA. 
20,000 in your own budget and 10,000 is that 10,000 Perk was asking about. Because if you hire a part-time administrator who might also be a road commissioner, it's legitimate to pay that portion of their salary out of the roads budget. So you've got it there. And I think either way, you're gonna need, I think if Lucian hadn't taught us anything in the last six months, it's that this town's gonna to need a road commissioner, one way or the other. The town clerk's not gonna do that. The assistant town clerk's not gonna do that. And I know in the past, a select board member has done it, but it's gotten a lot more complicated than it was even three or four years ago. So I think you need that flexibility in the roads budget for that as an alternative. Enough said. Meeting last night was very interesting. I, wanted, I thought Bruce was going to be here tonight to, to tell you a little bit about it, but I'm going to tell you a little bit about it. Um, Just planning commission? The planning commission meeting, the planning committee meeting last night, we met first of all with two people from the uh, uh, regional planning and zoning about working with them to try to uh, work in the future around the, the uh, severe floodplain areas in town, the properties that are in it. You know, we have 86 properties that are in the severe floodplain in Wolcott, and only 13 of those 86 have flood insurance. And with the program that they're working on in the future, if we can do it, it's going to take people, time, record keeping. Um, we can work with FEMA, FEMA and lower the rates that people have to pay for flood insurance let alone if we do these things, it puts us in better stead with FEMA. And as much as we dance with FEMA, that's not a bad thing. The second meeting was about, I think, something that touches all of us, and that's broadband coverage in the Wolfgang. Getting decent internet service in the Wolfgang. Most everybody here is now covered by consolidated communication. I think they're trying, but the lines that Fairpoint put in, I don't think are state of the art by any way you see, and the equipment that they've inherited is, is pretty interesting. Uh, and we all have war stories of how we deal with their service every day. There's like 20 towns in the Northeast Kingdom, Craftsbury is one of them, they're gonna vote on town meeting day to form a regional network. Yep. Okay. Um, <coughs> Eden's very interested in Memorial County, and we're really thinking about it. We want, you know, at maybe some point late spring to bring this to you. Um, as a town, we can do one of two ways. We can try to do something by ourselves, like a town in New Hampshire did. If the town wants to, this doesn't have to, but wants to. Town of New Hampshire got together with, in this case, Consolidated, and they uh, floated a bond for like $2 million, 20 year bond, which cost every subscriber, not the taxpayer, but everybody that subscriber, $10 extra a month on the bill. But at the end of the 20 years, and they got state of the art broadband. And at the end of 20 years, the town owned the infrastructure. So that's one way you could possibly do it. The other way is you get into one of these regional networks and they do it through the region. Um, and uh, so we're going to look at all those options. And the, the last thing I want to say about that is, if Mike, I mentioned your name on this so you can blame me. <laughs> the Memorial Regional Planning Commission is having a meeting on February 27th, which happens to be the same night, or I don't know if it's day or night, but February 27th, uh, where they're bringing in presenters from towns that have already done this and regions that have already done this. Did you know Elmore is already in a fiber optics region? I didn't know that. Nope. They're already going. 
So, I mean, it's not like, hey, this is something we should be scared about. But we need to get more information and bring it back to you later in the year. And Mike, I, I think this meeting's got your name all over it. Yeah, it sounds like it does. <laughs> That's what I said last night, so I said blame me. Uh, um, yeah. So, February 27th, should I, you know, you I'm interested. <laughs> How do I give Jim, give Jim a call or, um, uh, it's not here. It's a, it's down in Johnson. Uh, yeah. I was talking to the Johnson select board about this today, actually. So I guess this propped up on their radar too. Yeah. So, okay. I'll, I'll make sure I get there. Okay. Great. All right, perfect. Just uh, one other thing while we're on unfinished business. Um, I missed it because I want, wasn't here, but I would like to just make an amendment to the minutes um, from the last one. Hold on one moment. You can never find it when you're looking for it. Good night. Um, I would like to strike from the third page, second, third to last paragraph. Eric pointed out that the town has lost employees who have worked here for decades. If there's a chance to reorganize the town, he is for it. I just don't think that's pertinent to the budget for 2021. Mm -hmm. it's yeah, you're right. I found it. Uh, is that budget for 2020, Yeah, right here towards the end. Eric pointed out that the town has lost employees who have worked here. It just doesn't have anything to do with discussion. You mean it should go under a different heading, or no? I just I don't. It? I just I think it should be stri stricken. It's it's an opinion. It's not it's not a pertinent fact for the discussion. That's my personal opinion. Yeah. Yeah. I don't. I just don't think it's minute worthy. I don't have a problem with that. No. Okay. So I'd like to make a motion to accept the minutes as amended. Second Hi, <laughs> Richard. All those in favor say aye. 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 Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Okay, so next is review correspondence. We have some select board trainings. Did everyone look at their email? Yeah. Two Wednesdays. Yeah. Wednesday, oh, excuse me, Wednesday in um, Middlebury and a Thursday in Woodstock. I emailed BLCT to ask why there's never any on the weekends, and they they said they will they will look into it. <laughs> I've never heard of it. So there you go. Yeah. Um, verb. All right. So these guys. Something happened to them. I think they. Okay. Um, health advocate program changes. So this is in this, so we, VLCT used to offer health advocate through verb at $3.50 per subscriber per month, but now they are not. Yeah, I remember Linda sent us an email. She said mm -hmm. uh, they don't really they make good use. She, don't think, she didn't think that they ever used it. Right? Yeah. yeah. Oh, I don't recall anything about that. Yeah. But now it's not being offered at all, I believe. Yeah. It says, but you can, our broker partner will be offering it. So that if you want to continue health advocate services, you can contact Kavery at VLCT directly. Um, but again, Linda said that she doesn't think that we've used it. Yeah. So it doesn't seem. I don't see, uh, I'm not taking an action. No. Any other discussion? No. Can, can we go back to the uh, 
the increase in recycling tip fees. Yeah, just so I clarify, I'll get hold of Linda. And my opinion is that if it isn't a really significant increase in cost, that we don't raise our tipping. I mean, our rates, trash rates, because I mean we're the only we're the only one, I, as far as I know, in Northern Vermont that is still letting the recycling, if you bring trash, come in for free. And, well, in the in the past, when we have considered raising rates, the first thing we do is check everyone else's to see oh, yeah. what the par is. Yeah. So well, I would think that would, that would be the first that. step, if yep. anything. And then uh, the window on the other. Maybe when you're talking to your Lamoille County Waste yep. people, see if anyone else, if this is creating anyone else raising rates. I know that initially, of course, when we didn't raise ours, everyone else did. Start. Right, and we've well, been we've tried to keep it as little as possible. Yeah, that's why I, what my what my attitude about that is that if if we can, if it's responsible to do so because we're you know we're in the black and, and I think maybe part of it might be because of that. It's, uh, yep, I'll agree. That's a prudent approach. All right, I'm shutting up now. Thanks, Richard. Um, all right, if there's so that's the end of agenda. That's the end of the agenda, right? Yep, Black History Month event by the Wilkett Historical Society and the Wilkett Methodist Church that is going to be at the town hall. Um, dinner with traditional African dishes and a few American dishes, traditional African dances performed by our own ballet Wilkett. Brief presentation on the life and ministry of Mr. George S. Brown, the Reverend, um, founder of the Wilkett United Methodist Church and missionary of Liberia, Africa. <coughs> Come and bring a friend and enjoy the unique piece of Vermont and Wilkett's, Wilkett and Vermont's history. It's also sponsored by the ballet. Yeah, it's cool. I can speak the to ballet. it. Oh, I, that's, oh yeah. yes, I didn't see that. Sorry. Yeah. My, uh, my wife used to you know, take the dance classes and they're, they're super too. cool. Yeah, great I, know, I, know, right? I know people who've done that before. So, all right, with that being said, I'd like to make a motion to adjourn the meeting. I will second that motion. By Richard. All those in favor say aye. 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 Seven o'clock on the nose, Deb.